start off by thanking my subscriber Shane. This is what got me to even make this YouTube video. Anyways guys, hopefully you guys go till the end of this and give it a like and a comment for what your weirdest, creepiest, funniest, most interesting gas station story is. So without further ado, let us grab a blanket, turn off your lights for true scary stories that happen while you were pumping. Gas station story to Horror Studio One. This was super weird and just happened last week. A little information about myself. I'm in my freshman year of high school. I'm 5'8 and around 150 pounds and male. I was with my friend going to the gas station because we didn't have anything else to do. We walk in and my friend has to go to the bathroom. I'm getting an orange crush and then this old guy, 50 plus with his long orange gray beard walks up to me and says, are you getting that orange crush because of your hair? And by the way, I am a ginger. I told him, fuck off. Then he turns all apologetic with his shaky voice saying, Oh, oh I I'm so sorry. And I told him that that was total bullshit. My friend was out of the bathroom at this point, And he told me that he could hear me cussing this dude out in the bathroom. I told him what had happened. And I'm trying to check out while the old guy was following me. Before that, he was telling the cashier that he couldn't help himself or something. Anyways... The guy follows me to the cashier, and then says he wants to pay for my drink. I told him no, and come to think of it, he didn't buy anything the whole time I saw him. I told him, you better not say that to the wrong person, or you'll get your ass kicked. He inches his way towards the door and says, can I at least get a handshake, while extending his shaking hand. Obviously I told him no, and he said he was sorry and left. I asked the cashier if he's on something, and she said she smelled alcohol on him. She also said he goes to that gas station all the time. It's kind of funny, when me and my friend got to his house, we just started laughing our asses off. But to the drunk of the gas station, let's not meet again. A stranger got in my car at an empty gas station and wouldn't get out. This happened just last night, and honestly, I'm still a little shaken up over it. I'll try to retell the tale exactly as it happened, but my fear is sure to have nudged my memory a bit. I work evenings as a dispatcher in a medium-sized midwestern city. I was driving home at 2am when I stopped for gas. In retrospect, it was stupid to have stopped at all. The gas station itself was poorly lit and completely empty of any other customers. But I knew the shady areas of town and this was not usually one of them. As I was pumping gas, I noticed a middle-aged black woman sitting on the curb across the parking lot. It was a cold night, and it just started raining. The woman was not wearing weather-appropriate clothing, so she was drenched. When the woman saw that I was watching her, she called out for me from across the parking lot. My second of many stupid decisions that night was choosing to engage with her. I was worried for her, so I approached her to see what sort of help I could offer. Hey, beautiful! I'm just trying to get home, but no one will help me, she said. I'm trying to get to City A, but the cab ride is $60 and I only have $40. Can you help me? I don't usually give money to panhandlers, but this woman seemed genuine. The weather was terrible, and my job centers around helping people, so I agreed. I told her I didn't have any cash, but if she would come with me inside, I'd take some money out of the ATM and give her a few dollars. But the ATM wasn't working. I apologized and told her there was nothing else I could do for her. She followed me back outside. I lay chatting with me as I opened my driver's door to get in. And then she got in my car. I was too shocked to really say anything. I sat, staring at her as she buckled herself into the passenger seat. As soon as she got into my car, her demeanor changed entirely. She no longer seemed forlorn, as much as she did extremely, extremely excited and restless. Just take me to my aunt's house, she said. She can give me money. Of course, alarm bells were going off in my head, although my first instinct is to tell her to get the fuck out of my car. My gut tells me that would be dangerous. She's already proven to be unpredictable, she seemed to be high, and I didn't know if she had any weapons on her. Forcing her out of my vehicle, I thought, had the potential to elicit a violent reaction. Where are you asking me to take you? I finally said. Just start driving, and I'll tell you when to turn. No, if you want me to consider driving you somewhere, I need you to tell me where we're going, I say, with no real intention of driving her anywhere. 
Don't worry, honey. I'm not one of the bad blacks. I'm not gonna rob you or none. Just drive. No, I repeated. What is your aunt's address? Okay, it's on street A. What's the house number? As I was asking her questions, she got really agitated. We still had not left the gas station parking lot. I considered getting out of the car and going into the gas station for help at A. She seemed to know and be friendly with one attendant that was inside when I tried to get money in B. I wasn't about to leave her alone in my car. Finally, she snapped at me and said, Why are you asking me so many questions? I thought we were friends. You don't trust me? Is it because I'm black? I work at the police department, I said. It's my job to ask these sorts of questions. She flipped the fuck out. She started yelling at me for being a snitch, about trying to get her in trouble, just in general losing her damn fucking mind at this point. I I'm more scared than ever. I just wanted her gone. But my instinct still told me asking her to get out of my car wouldn't work. So I just decided to take a risk. I'm not a police officer. I work at a police department. Why don't I take you to a Walmart and see if they have an ATM that works? My idea was to get her out of my car as peacefully as possible, then lose her in the store. She liked my idea and immediately calmed down. I, I knew that driving off with this woman in my car was incredibly, incredibly risky, but it seemed like my best option at the time. As we're driving, she keeps talking to me. Her thoughts were erratic, bouncing all over the place. It sometimes seemed difficult for her to follow through one, a thought, but this is roughly how our conversations went. I'm glad we're friends now. I have about five or six people trying to get me. I'm gonna come to your work tomorrow so we can go arrest them together. Okay, we can talk about that tomorrow. Tonight, you said you're trying to get home. Yes, honey. I'm trying to get to City B. City B? I thought you said you need to go to City A. Yeah, 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 City A, that's, that's what I meant. That's why the cab ride is $40, it's far away. The cab ride is $40? Yeah, baby! You said you have $40. I do, baby, I have $40, but the cab ride is 60 Silence. Are you sure you can't take me to my aunt's house? She lives close by on Street B. I thought you said she lived on Street A. No, baby, I'm at Street B. It doesn't matter. She won't give me money anyways. You, you sure just you can't just take me to City A? It was terrifyingly obvious that this woman was utterly full of shit because the details of her story were constantly changing. When we pulled into the Walmart parking lot, she finally got out of my car, only after I got out first and followed me into the store. I told her before we went to find an ATM, I needed to use the restroom. My plan was to call the police from inside a stall, but she followed me into the bathroom, and that's when things got really weird. She grabbed the crook of my arm and whispered into my ear, You don't got no money, gimme, it's okay. But let me ask you something, sweetie. Do you like it, your pussy ate? I told her no as forcefully as I could manage, bolted into the stall, and locked the door as fast as I possibly managed to. Now, as soon as I had a barrier between us, I said, You know, I have some friends at the police department that can probably help you better than I can. I'm, I'm just going to call them and we can figure this out together. Again, at the mention of the cops, she started screaming at me. I just kept reiterating that the police would help her. She snapped at me that she was just going to leave and stormed out of the bathroom. But it wasn't over. I waited to make sure she was really, really gone. Sure enough, not 60 seconds after she left, she came back into the bathroom and started banging on the stall door, and she said something that scared me more than anything else. Hey, come back to your car with me, I left my beer in your car. I blatantly told her that no, I saw her get into my car, and she had obviously nothing with her other than the clothes on her back. After that, she left the bathroom again and didn't come back. I waited a good five minutes before exiting the bathroom. I immediately found a manager who called the police for me. Thankfully, I was in a different police jurisdiction from the one I work in because I was mortified at how entirely stupid I had been the whole night and would have died of embarrassment if any of my co-workers had responded. The officer that responded took my statements and advised me to be more careful in the future. He said that sometimes panhandlers turn violent and that just recently there had been a report of a woman who matched my description assaulting a good Samaritan that had stopped to try to help her. I definitely learned a lesson on stranger danger, and I'm lucky to have come out unscathed. I'm glad my stupidity didn't kill me, so Reddit, the next time you try to help a stranger late at night, don't.
gas station pervert. So this actually happened about a week ago. I frequent the sub pretty often, and growing up in a not so savory area, I've met my fair share of weirdos. But this really struck a nerve with me recently. A little background: I work for a marketing firm that promotes high-end cosmetics. So every day I go business to business, selling these makeup sets to whoever will buy one. Many of our sales are made to customers in parking lots or at gas stations. This story takes place at a gas station in a relatively rural town. Generally, we, me and my partner, will park at a gas station to start the day, make our promo bags, use the bathroom, etc. We pull up and there's no parking spots available, so I decide to pull, pull up to a pump because we weren't planning on staying long. Like I said, rural area, not a lot of foot traffic or businesses around. Me and my partner both go into the urination station. I end up finishing before he does and go back to the car to start making my promo bags for the day. As I'm doing this, an all rickety pickup truck pulls up to the pump opposite mine. The man who gets out looks like he's seen better days. His beard was yellowing, and he looked disheveled. As I'm making my bags, I feel him staring at me, so I figured, hey, let's see if this guy's got any ladies in his life that I like makeup. And I casually start to pitch him. He lights up immediately and quickly moves over to my side of the pump, claiming his hearing was going and couldn't hear what I was saying. I repeat myself, and he barely acknowledges any mention of the makeup and starts making comments on how pretty I am. This might have been sweet, but the way he was looking and talking about me made me feel a little unsettled. I chalked it up to him just being a little not all there. And kind of tried to end the conversation politely. Nope, he would not take the hint. He was now standing close enough that I could smell him, and I was getting visibly uncomfortable and hoping my partner, he's a pretty big guy, would come back soon. At this point, he had said some pretty vulgar things about my body, and that I tried ignoring with some awkward laughter. When out of nowhere, he grabs my hand and held it up to his chest and told me how great it was that I didn't have a ring and that I was unmarried. I didn't get to react really. My partner had come up behind me apparently amu amused by what was going on until he saw the look on my face. When he sees my partner, he immediately backs off and goes into the gas station. And I tell my partner how uncomfortable and weird out I was. Keep in mind, I meet my fair share of creepy dudes daily, working a door-to-door -door sales job, and I'm usually pretty unfazed by it, so thinking he's gone, we both laugh it off, mostly my partner, and continue our bag making. My partner goes off to pitch a few ladies smoking outside, on the side of the gas station, and almost on cue this guy walks back out and makes a beeline towards me. Cue more inappropriate comments and attempted hand-holding. I was giving obvious signs that I didn't want anything to do with this man, but he either didn't recognize this or didn't care. He started talking about how I should come back with him to meet his dogs and cats and how his trailer was right down the road. The last straw was when he put his one hand on my lower back and the other reaching towards my face. I don't know why I froze, I half squirmed away when I heard my partner shout from across the parking lot and turned to see him walking fast towards us. Again, the man backs off, but my partner let him hear it this time. Everyone around us is looking now. He mumbled something and then got in his truck and left. I'm still pissed at myself for not speaking up. I like to hope that, if I was alone, I would have been able to get out of that situation, but I'm thankful my partner was there to help scare him off. Gas Station Hitchhiker Teen Creep Dear Mods, I was editing my original post on mobile, and I accidentally clicked delete on the wrong post, so I'm reposting this. Sorry, sorry. Please don't kick me out. Also, I have horrible English and spelling, so please don't point out any grammar mistakes if I make them. I want to make this post to show the dangers of picking up hitchhikers, especially those you encounter in gas stations. This story is also posted on Reddit Creepy Encounters to spread awareness about the situation. This happened just this past weekend, somewhere between Temecula and Rainbow, California, and the whole incident took place in about 10 minutes time. Long story short, driving back home early afternoon from Palm Springs on what would be a two hour drive. Earlier that day, me and a male friend were hiking out on Mount Jacinto. I was tired so I fell asleep on the first hour drive home. This happened around 2.30pm 
When we stopped for gas somewhere between Merida or Rainbow, California, the place was well populated and even had a target down the road and was not far from a freeway exit. On my original post, a commenter said the gas station could have been by Old Town Temecula. While my friend was pumping gas, this teen about age 17 to 19 came up to my friend asking for a ride, he even said he'd pay. I was just waking up from my nap, so by the time I was fully awake, I saw this teen already outside my passenger side door, and my friend agreed to give the kid a lift. I gave my friend the silent, what the fuck dude, look, as they both got in the car but kept quiet as not to stir anything. I wasn't able to get a good look at this teen, but from my observation, he was a white kid, dark brown, black hair, possibly 17 to 19, 20 wasn't being the oldest. He wore all black, possibly a beanie, and had a backpack and an older model LG phone or similar. He smelled strongly of weed and some other musk. He looked like an emo kid to me. Moment creepy kid got into the car. He went all crazy and weird. Tried to sell his drugs and weed. Was eyeing the Beats headphone my friend was wearing. Attempting a trade for drugs. Trying to convince my friend to do a porn flex said there was good money in it. Kept telling my friend he can do a casting call for porn. And that they should shoot some videos. And even gave bogus websites on where to get bitches. He spoke like a gangsta wannabe, and to be honest, I barely understood what he was saying at all. He also tried to ask for money, which means he lied about having money for a ride in the first place. He mumbled a lot to himself, laughing at nothing to which I just assumed he was just really high off his rockers. Creepy Teen also told my friend the car was trash. Since all of our camping gear was in the back seat, his mood would jump from super excited to super quiet and broody. I was quiet to near silent this whole time, and obviously scared. What I did not know was that he could see my facial expressions from the passenger side view mirror. The kid noticed this and asked me in a serious tone, why are you acting weird? And went really quiet from that point. My friend tried to distract him a lot with small talk while I scanned the road for a possible escape plan. Every time we asked the kid where he should be dropped off, as we had originally agreed to drop him a few streets down, the creepy teen's tone changed and says, keep driving, then would switch back into pimp happy mode. I finally and quietly signaled my friend to drive down to a crowded exit where there was a diner and gas station. At least there would be witnesses in case the thing goes bad. Lie, we were gonna do a store shop because creepy teen noticed we exited. Then once we parked, told him nicely and calmly he needs to go. Took a while to convince him to get out. Clearly, creepy kid didn't like me. I was scared out of my mind. My friend's car was also this old clunker stick shift. It tends to die or sputter, and the gear sometimes gets stuck. So it took us a good 10 to 15 seconds to back out the parking lot. The creepy teen gave us a long stare down. I can tell he was pissed at me, though he seemed to have liked my friend. By the time we pulled out, I can see he was calling someone on his cell phone. After we left and drove back to the freeway, that's when I broke down and asked my friend why the hell he did such a stupid, reckless thing as he was the most paranoid person I know when it comes to strangers. Friend told me that the teen originally approached him, saying his mom either forgot to pick him up and just said he needs a ride a few blocks down and was almost close to tears too. Spoke normal, although desperate. When my friend said no, the teen motioned that he'll ask for my permission and went straight for me. This creep was determined to get into our car. My friend panicked and fell cornered as the creepy teen was about to go to my side of the passenger car, so he decided to play along and do what the kid wants. My friend doesn't do well with confrontations, and at his panic state, made a huge mistake. He at least admitted he fucked up big time though. I pointed out the kid could have easily lured us somewhere, we could have been jumped or gotten us carjacked, and we are very lucky that didn't happen. Hopefully the kid was only a high and crazy runaway rather than criminal. This is a harsh lesson to my friend about the dangers of picking up hitchhikers on the road. I also told my friend if the kid had money and a working cell phone, he could have just taken the bus or called anyone for a ride from the gas station anyways. Later that night, I spoke to my cousin, who was, who was very, very familiar with the area. He told me that the place has a huge transient and homelessness problem and is known for a lot of drug dens, mostly meth and heroin, since the kid, if he was homeless, had a working mobile phone. It's possible he was a drug dealer, 
and was luring us to his accomplices to get us jumped or carjacked. I guess we really were lucky. I have a few more camping and road trips planned throughout the year. I, I have to admit, the experience rattled me bad, and I had a few nightmares since. I was a near victim once of a road assault, so this brought back a lot of bad memories. I just brought some pepper spray yesterday and will carefully plan our route for the next trip to be safe and travel with more people. Also, we'll keep an eye on my clueless friend to make sure he doesn't really, again, pick up any strange hitchhikers. Edit. As of this afternoon, my friend's car got broken into and was stolen. It took the police about two hours before they found the car abandoned in his Chinese restaurant. The most expensive thing that was taken in the car was his bear's headphones. Creeper at the gas station. I've been on Reddit about seven to eight months now and haven't felt compelled to post anything until I read many stories on this subreddit. I'm 16 years old, I'm very short, only 5'1 at most, and about 130 pounds. I'm never one to draw attention to myself because I don't really crave it. I'm only outgoing and funny around people I know, and I'm comfortable with home, school, relatives, really nowhere else, especially if I'm alone, I'm always quite quiet. My house is located near a convenience store, and my mom and I typically stop there at three to four times a week for gas and afternoon snacks. These incidents is carried on for a span of at least three weeks, starting in later January until the end of February. There is a store clerk in there who up until these events, I never really paid attention to him or even acknowledged him. One example being because I'm in and out of the store in a matter of moments. So it was quite a shock to me when I'm paying, he starts throwing around jokes, just stupid innocent things that I laugh at and leave. This continues on for a few days, and he starts making conversation, asking how I'm doing, talking about the weather, it's basic conversation, but there's an undertone to it, like he's trying to get to know me better. One day I enter the store by myself again, and this time I'm just in there for a few for a few moments, cause I'm buying a crap load of things for my mom, and as I'm walking around the store, I just feel someone watching me. I casually look up and look around the store, there's a few people and all of them are about their business, none sparing me a glance. Then my eye connects with a store clerk's. He's just watching me and has this look on his face that just creeps me the hell out. It's not a she's trying to steal something look, nor is it a friendly look. It's a look that unsettles me and has me worried. He quickly looks away to greet another customer. I shake it off, but I stall a little longer in hopes that the cashier can help me out, but no such luck and I have no choice but to finally place my things on the counter. He starts a weird conversation again, and I make a point to keep it short and simple as I wait for him to finish ringing me up, but he's taking a sweet time, commenting on items, saying things like, you having a party tonight, and did you buy me anything? I force a laugh, and finally he says my total. That'll be a thousand pennies. I laugh again and hand him the cash, and he's trying his best to make eye contact with me. I finally had a chance to look away, but he doesn't. His beady black eyes never strayed from my face as he handed me my cash. As I'm leaving the store, I see his reflection on the glass and he's still watching me. This man is a beast. He isn't exactly short, but what he lacks in height he makes up in burly and huge. It's all fat with a huge nasty beer belly. He has a tattoo on his neck and words written on each finger. He's just all in all nasty, ugly and disgusting. And I couldn't figure out why this man, who was possibly older than my father, was trying to have a conversation with a 16-year-old girl. I don't draw attention to myself. I don't stick out. The only thing really noticeable about me is my lack of height. I come from a wealthy family, but I don't flaunt it, and I certainly don't ever talk about it. One evening, it was closer to 10, and my family was making a quick trip to the store before going home. As we pulled up, I noticed that this man is outside talking to another man. I never told my parents about what had been going on, I just kind of let it slide. But as I'm sitting in the car waiting to get out, a feeling of dread overcomes me, and I'm rooted to my seat. This man and I are normally separated by a counter, but I just 
couldn't possibly bear being within inches of this man. I wanted so badly to beg, beg my dad to go with me, but I couldn't form the words and even if I had it, it would have led to suspicions by my parents and eventually would have caved in and told them and that the man wouldn't want to meet both my overprotective parents at the same time. I shoved my fear aside and got out of the car. Of course he looked up. He smiled and made a point to hold the door open for me. I, I mumbled a thank you and hurried in. So did he. He seemed to follow me a few steps, and that was all it took for my heart to squeeze in fear. I quickened my pace and hurried as far as I possibly could get. It was the same routine. He watched me, smiling like the creep he was, and waited for me to come up to the counter to talk to me. Luck was on my side, and there happened to be another store clerk at the counter, and I made a, made a point to walk towards him. As I'm leaving the store, I once again caught the man's reflection on the window, and he's just staring at me with a pure look of hatred. As my dad pulled off, I looked towards the back of the store where the employees park, and there were only two cars, a white Dodge of some type, and a small green Jeep. The next morning, as my mom and I exited our neighborhood, a white Dodge car goes past us, and in a few short seconds I saw the creep behind the wheel. Three weeks ago, my mom needed gas before taking me to school, and I had no choice but to go. I'm usually dressed pretty nice, not overtly flashy or anything. My hair is always in curls, so there's really nothing special about it. When I walk in, his face lights up, and he's just staring at me. I pay quickly and walked out before he could say anything to me. I kept opening and closing my mouth, trying to form the words to tell my mom what's been going on. I was practically crying when I said, Can we please not go back to that store again? She thought I was joking and laughed, but as I explained to her the reasons, her knuckles started turning white, forming into a grip very, very tightly. She was silent the rest of the trip aside from saying okay a few times. When we pulled up at my school, she said, this will be handled by the time you get out of school and drove off. It was a relief to finally tell an adult, and it's even better telling others. It may not seem like a huge thing looking back now, but it still made me feel uneasy. About, about, about going near this man. Attempted gas station robbery, I think. Hey y'all, I hope this is the right place for this. This is an extremely weird story about being in the wrong part of town. I was doing a show with my band in our guitarist hometown, Columbus, Ohio. We did the show and we're driving our cars back to his place to crash. I'm pretty sure we were driving on Dublin Granville, a big boulevard that runs through most of the north side of Seabus. I want to stop and get some snacks and stuff. I called guitarist who was in the car in front of me and told him I was going to stop at the Sweetway coming up on the right. He said, dude, don't go there. It gets really weird at night. Just wait and go to the store by my place. I disregarded this advice because I was thirsty as hell and needed a big bottle of water first and foremost. He only had tap water at his place, which I never trust because the tap water in my parents' house wasn't drinkable and made me sick growing up. I never understood how touring musicians who aren't addicted to bottled water exist. I separated from our little convoy and pulled in. There was a cop car parked there and two cops standing by the front door. I could see inside that the register had the big bulletproof glass set up. Oh joy. I went in, picked some stuff out, and on my way to the register, a guy and girl comes in. Well, run in. The girl runs to the back of the store, grabs a gallon jug of milk, and begins pouring it all over her head and face. The guy pulls out a handgun and fires a shot into the ceiling. He yells, Hey, my girl needs some milk, and y'all gonna give her the milk she needs, and there ain't gonna be no any fucking trouble. As he's yelling, a cop has his gun pointed at the guy from outside the door, and he's yelling for the guy to drop the gun, etc. Dude drops the gun and gets down, and this big cop comes in and basically jumps on the guy. The girl is in the back screaming and crying and covered in milk. The other cop comes in, and has a restraint and a sort of bear hug while she's freaking out about dude being arrested. The guy looked at me and the only other customer in the store and forcefully said, you and you get the fuck out of here now. I threw a $10 bill on the counter that had been in my hand the whole time and left with my shit. That store still owes me like three bucks. I bailed as fast as I could and got to the guitarist's place. He opened the door with a big smile and said, well, how'd that go? 
I really should have listened. I completely realize the story sounds like some bad happened shit, and I still have no clue how to explain this or what the deal with the milk was. I told the story in another sub before, and someone suggested that she might have been pepper sprayed. It makes the most sense out of any explanation I can think of. So, really weird, violent, screaming milk couple, let's never meet again.